The movement has grown. There were just a few student tent squatters last month, and now there are at least 120,000 protesters. Organizers say 230,000. As in Spain and Greece, so in Israel, people are fed up of the rising cost of living, and they want the government to fix it. These demonstrators are not taking a party line. It's about rich and poor, lack of housing, day-to-day -day survival. It's impossible. We work so hard and uh, we cannot afford a uh, quiet life. You know, we always have to struggle. And uh, I hope this will, uh, will ever change. Once we had the smallest gaps between rich and poor, we had the smallest gap in the world. Today we are number one from the largest gaps between rich and poor. Last Saturday's protest drew 100,000 people. They marched to call for social justice. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has decided to appoint a cabinet-level team to address the demonstrators' demands. Parliament has already okayed legislation to speed up the building of new homes. But that is not enough to keep the demonstrators off the streets. In theory, they shouldn't have much to complain about. Growth and unemployment is 5%. The debt burden is 75%, meaning there is some room for spending. But some people are not able to pay their way, and that has transformed into a general movement of discontent. While demonstrations in London turned violent on Saturday during riots in Tottenham in the north, shops have been looted and cars set on fire in the worst clashes seen in the suburbs for years. They started after a march to the police station in protest over a man shot dead by police during an exchange of fire on Thursday. And it's been a case of third time lucky for a rocket.